del doctor Naoshi, Naoshi Irata, quien nos va a presentar eh, pues, la ponencia titulada Japanese Airquake Research for Seismic and Tsunami Disaster Resilience. The prof, professor Dr. Naoshi Irata is director of Airquake Prediction Research Center of Tokyo University. He is member of National Research Institute for Air Science and Disaster Resilience. Field of investigation is observational seismology, crustal structure, earthquake forecast, and seismic hazard. Other activity are uh, council of seismological, seismological uh, societies of Japan, from two, 2004 to present, and is consul or coordinating committee for airquake prediction, is consul two for science and technology, subdivision of, ge of geodesic and geophysic member, from 2007 to present. He is member of the committee of, sur of survey Observation Plan Police Committee and Airquake Research Committee since two, 2003 to present. And other relevant research experience. The doctor Naoshi Hirata during 10 past years has been involved in the development and application of seismological method of for airquake prediction research problem. He is one of the leaders of the Japanese National Airquake Prediction Research Program to promote both basic research and real-time monitoring, monitoring of the crustal process. Dr. Hirata has lead development of Japanese University Seismic Network with use communication satellite system. He has lead the joint observation in Japanese Iceland to understood heterogeneity in the air cruise. He is leader of metropolitan project. The project is regional characterization of the cruise in metropolitan areas for prediction of strong ground motion since 2002. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, a very kind introduction. I am very happy and very honored to be uh, invited to be this uh, honorable uh, symposium conference. I would like to introduce uh, Japanese uh, researches for tsunami and uh, earthquake uh, uh, hazard uh, mitigation programs. And, okay. Okay, uh, I prepared uh, a couple of things that I would like to show you. The first, I will uh, talk about a very brief, short history of the research. And uh, basically, I will discuss about the headquarters for earthquake research promotion, H-E-R-P. So this is the Japanese uh, government organization to take care of, of earthquake and tsunami uh, researches. And I show you uh, two recent Japanese earthquakes. One is 2016 Kumamoto earthquake. The other is uh, the 2011 Tohoku Oki earthquake, which generated a large tsunami in, in, Jap in Japan. And what we right now uh, estimate of uh, hazard and uh, uh, loss and damage for uh, metropolitan area, so basically in Tokyo, and also a very large earthquake in Nankai Trough, it's southwestern part of Japanese island. And I'm going to summarize all the, my talk. Okay, this, this is a very brief history. 
we started our so-called national earthquake oh, national earthquake prediction program. So the idea of earthquake prediction is to prevent or to mitigate uh, earthquake disaster by forecasting or predicting an earthquake. So we started, you know, about 50 years ago. And uh, this is a five years project and uh, we did uh, until, until it's moving, <laughs> earthquake, no. Uh, until the seventh uh, pro pro programs. And during th this program, we had a uh, Kobe earthquake. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have 1995 Kobe earthquake, which killed more than 6,000 people at the area. This is the magnitude 7.3 large earthquake, but this is not extraordinary large earthquake, magnitude 7 earthquake. And we change our mind, simply predict or forecast an earthquake is not enough, and we should take care of what kind of disaster will happen and how to mitigate those disasters, uh, loss or uh, damages. Then. Uh, the Japanese government make uh, 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 a new uh, organization, what we call headquarters for earthquake uh, research programs. And this is uh, the new program, and uh, we change a little bit from pure science to uh, collaboration with engineer and social sciences. Okay. Again, we had a very large earthquake and tsunami in 2011, which, it, which impacted the, the society very much, not only for scientific uh, society, but also uh, the, the all uh, 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 sectors of Japanese uh, uh, societies. And we emphasize how to reduce the damage and loss by tsunamis at that time, okay? So this is a very brief, very brief, but, but the, the, the point of the, the recent and the history of Japanese uh, uh, research, okay? Now, okay, what is the headquarters? Okay, the headquarters was uh, organized by law, actually. The, uh, Japan uh, established uh, the special measures law on earthquake disaster prevention. It, it was enacted in 1995. And also, this uh, the law formulates uh, two committees. One is uh, the policy committee, the other is earthquake research committees. The policy committees basically determine, formulate the, the basic uh, the, uh, items of what we have to do and to get, uh, the, to get the money from funded by the government. And the research, earthquake research committee has a responsibility to evaluate what the status of the, uh, uh, the seismic status in Japan and what kind of earthquake we had in, in recently and also we have some estimate in the future earthquake disaster, earthquake hazard, actually. Okay. And we formulated basic comprehensive policy, what we have to do, and there, we have a couple of things that we have to do, and here I, oops, I show uh, four items. The first one is probabilistic seismic hazard assessment. This is what we call PSHA. So this is a, a very general idea of the hazard estimate uh, of uh, uh, seismic hazard estimate method. This is a probabilistic 
uh, way, uh, what the percentage of a large earthquake will occur and what the, how strong uh, ground motion we, we have. And also we emphasize the uh, real-time hazard information. So it includes the uh, uh, early, earthquake early warning, earthquake early warning and tsunami warning. So this is the, the second priority of this uh, the policy. An earthquake prediction program in Tokai area. This is a very special area that we believed that the, we could predict an earthquake. But uh, the last year we have changed our mind to also in Tokai area, we cannot predict an earthquake. So we just uh, integrated all the program into the probabilistic seismic hazard uh, assessment. Okay. Go. For those uh, research, we developed uh, seismic networks and strong motion networks and GPS network and active fault survey in inland. And we have more than 1,000 seismic stations inland every 20 kilometers. It's very uniform seismic networks. And also, uh, stone ground motion uh, is uh, very uh, important to uh, quickly assess how large uh, strong motion occur right after the earthquake occur occurrence. So we have uh, about uh, three, uh, we have about 3,000, uh, okay, no. Okay, anyway, so th th this is the distribution of seismic network. We have uh, more than 800 uh, high sensitivity seismic network and uh, it's very hard to see uh, the GPS network consists of 1,300, 1,300 seismic uh, GPS stations also every 20 kilometers. So covered by all the uniform seismic network and the GPS network. So the idea is to monitor what's happening uh, in Japan and the seismicity and cluster deformation. So it, it takes about uh, uh, five years after we decided to, to implement those uh, stations. Okay, come on. Okay. This is the uh, time history of the number of earthquakes that Japan Meteorological Agency, this is the organization, they have a responsibility to analyze the earthquake. Okay. Basically, this is a 10,000 earthquake per year, one year. We have m more than 10,000 earthquakes. At the 2011 Tohokoki earthquake, more than 30,000, more than 40,000, but, but this is the, not the real number because the, the, the JMA people are so busy to analyze all the data, so maybe more than 40,000 earthquakes occur in 2011. So anyway, all the earthquakes are analyzed by manually by JMA people. And this information is released to the public every day. And the, okay, th this is the situation that we are uh, right now. So, so many earthquakes occur every day every day and uh, in total more than 10,000 uh, uh, every year, okay? Go, okay. The purpose of such instrumentation is make this kind of map. This is the probabilistic, uh, th this is the probabilistic seismic hazard map. It was published, uh, the first version of this map published in 2010. Okay, this is the, uh, oh no, no, first version is in 2005. Okay, 
it takes it took 10 years after we decided to make this map 10 years because we have to uh, survey all the act, so-called active fault inland and all the history of a large earthquake in ocean so this is not the simple collection of the research published in paper we did many researches and it took 10 years. So the first version published in 2005. And almost every year, we revise this map and to release the people, okay? And this is the 2010 publication. It means the one year before 2011 Tohoku big earthquake. What we can see here is the, the red part is the probability of strong ground motion is high, and we have a, la, a, a large area along the Pacific coast. This is the Nankai Trough area, and also we have a red area in Sendai. This is close to the Tohoku earthquake epicenter. Okay? However, the the area of strong ground motion, the area affected by strong ground motion is a little bit smaller than what we really experienced in 2011 Tohoku earthquake. So this is a, somehow we, our estimate was underestimated than um, as compared to 2011 big earthquake. Okay, go, okay. So, we changed our mind after 2011 Tohoku earthquake and we emphasized tsunami warning system to implement it ocean bottom cable system that uh, uh, Professor Tanioka discussed yesterday. So we implemented, we installed the SNET and uh, do net. So uh, SNET is the seafloor uh, seismic and the tsunami observation network. And estimation of large earthquake in Nankai area is the next target be because we believe that's the, also in the southwestern part of Japan will be hit by a very large tsunami like uh, 2011 Tohokoki earthquake. So this is the current uh, idea of what we have to do. Okay. So this is the, 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 the current version, the newest version of a seismic hazard map. Okay, you cannot recognize the difference between the current version and the 2010 version. But if we take a look at carefully, then the percentage of the song ground motion is somehow changing because uh, we are approaching to the next large earthquake so that, that earthquake will happen every 100 years. So approximately 1% is increasing every year. So only 1%. So the, uh, the total image of the uh, probabilistic seismic hazard uh, is more or less the same. So Every year, I show this map to the public and say the meaning of this map is that there is no area in Japan that will be not affected by strong ground motion. So every, any place in, the, in Japan has a possibility to get a very large earthquake, strong ground motion. So that's the things that I, I told those people, those people the first. And then also we have a large possibility in this area. This area, the Tokyo is located in this area. And Osaka is also located here. So the, all the big city in Japan has a very high risk of seismic hazard. So this is the situation that we 
are facing. Again, the, the, this area will be hit by Nankai Trough, very large earthquake. It can be magnitude nine. So this same as in 19, uh, 2011 Tohoku area. Okay. I think you cannot see this number, but this, this is the, the percentage of the uh, strong ground motion seismic intensity six uh, minus. Okay, the seismic intensity in Japan is uh, uh, very much a domestic uh, unit, and the intensity in Japan is from zero to seven. So you use maybe the uh, MM uh, Melkali, uh, modified Melkali scale, this is from one to 12. But in Japan, we use only zero to seven. So the seven is the maximum by, ch by definition. And we believe that six minus, okay, we have six plus and six minus, and the six minus is uh, already strong enough if the, the houses are not well constructed. Then the, all the wooden old houses will, will be collapsed by uh, intensity six minus. And the probability is somehow 26 here. The, the red one is 26 in 30 years. So 26% in 30 years sounds low. This is not correct. Okay, imagine that in Japan, uh, the injury by traffic accident in 30 years is 24% injury by traffic. And uh, suffering from fire is 2% in 30, minutes, uh, 30 years. Okay, as compared to the traffic accident or fire, the, this probability is very much high. So this is what I, I am talking to Japanese people every year by showing this map. Okay, however, okay, there are many people, they have not experienced very big earthquake or tsunami in their lifetime or, or uh, mother's or father's lifetime and also grandpapa, grandmama's uh, lifetime. So, so the, uh, the time in nature, in earthquake or tsunami is very different from the natural uh, time. So we have a very large earthquake, very frequently, say, by a seismologist, but this is every 100 years. If we take a look at the, at the uh, specific area. However, we say that the, in nationwide Japan, we have, we have magnitude seven earthquake every year somewhere in Japan. So that's the situation we are facing. Okay, so, no, no, this is, I have done. Okay, to prevent uh, damages and uh, loss of life, we installed many seismic stations. Currently, more than 2,000 2, seismic stations, both in land and both in uh, ocean, ocean bottom. So we have more than yeah, approximately 200 ocean bottom stations around Japan. So I, I cannot see here, but, but here is a 150 and here is a 150 uh, seismic station at ocean bottom. But unfortunately, we do not have any instrument and also here. So I am uh, working to get the funded to install a seismic ocean bottom station around here, so, but not yet uh, completed. The idea to in install a seismic station at ocean bottom is to shorten the leading time of earthquake early warning systems. Because we have a many earthquakes at ocean, particularly this is the Tohoku area, and this is the Japan Trench, and we have a lots of earthquakes, a very large earthquake in, in this area at sea. If we have a seismic station here, the, the leading time of 
early earthquake warning is somehow 30 second area. Okay. Unfortunately, this is not 30 minutes. This is a 30 second. Okay. But this is good for uh, uh, the reduce the speed of the uh, high 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 speed uh, trains, uh, uh, ballet. Uh, Shinkansen in Japanese, and we have uh, many trains uh, lining up coastline. So, to it's impossible to stop the train only by 30 seconds. However, if we have a uh, 30 second, then they reduce the the speed of the train and uh, to prevent uh, derail the uh, uh, trains. And also, if we have uh, detected a tsunami. It helps us to 20 minutes earlier than only detected by uh, online stations. So this is uh, enough time to tell the people to evacuate from uh, shoreline. We spend a lot of money to save life in the coastline to instrument to uh, implement those uh, ocean bottom uh, stations. Okay, go. Okay, I will show you the the example of uh, the recent earthquake. Okay, this is a picture. What will happen if we have a magnitude seven earthquake close to city? So this is the uh, the town of Mashiki, Mashiki Machi, Mashiki town, and in this earthquake, uh, we lost more than two hundred people by this earthquake and. Uh, 8,600 8, uh, houses are totally destroyed. Most of them are not well uh, engineered, not well uh, prepared for a, a, a strong ground motion. We improved uh, many times uh, the building code after large earthquake. And, uh, but still, there are several um, approximately 20% of the total houses are a very old standard. So this is not illegal because the houses are legal when the, uh, the law was act, when, 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 the build, when the houses are built at, at that time. But as compared to the current standard, those houses are you know, too old to protect their, uh, their um, shape. Okay. And 150 people evacuated from those houses. This is the situation: magnitude seven earthquake hit close, hit the city or town. Okay. Oh, okay. This this, this is the uh, the the scale of the Japanese uh, intensity from from uh, zero to seven, and this, this the seven is the mm scale is the uh, twelve. Okay, at this particular uh, example, we have twice very strong ground motion. So we have a large so-called foreshock. This is a magnitude 6.5 foreshock, and 28 hours after magnitude 6.5 earthquake, we had another 7.3 large earthquake. So this is a, this, this is a not Common situation, but uh, you know, 20% uh, of total earthquake may have a uh, very large foreshock. So, so the lesson learned from this earthquake is once we have a very large earthquake, strong ground motion, and we may have another very strong ground motion. So, if you your houses are not strong enough for large earthquake, then you should evacuate quickly. So, but this case, the first earthquake occur um, 9, uh, 9 p.m., so mid, uh, uh, night of the 9 p.m., and then next day is, is very fine, and the people, okay, they, the people evacuate from this, their houses, go back again, uh, and again, the next day, there were very strong remotion, and finally, the damaged houses were collapsed. 
So the, the lesson from this uh, earthquake is that you should keep evacuated. Okay, another uh, very um, uh, interesting phenomenon is we have uh, this kind of a, a scenery in this source area. This is a so-called uh, uh, surface slip on the fault by the earthquake. And uh, about two meters, uh, the, this land slips toward uh, light laterally slip. And this is a field, uh, this is a wheat field, and it's clearly uh, recognized there is a, a two meter slip. Okay, um, the shallow earthquake inland sometimes occur uh, frequently. But the frequently means uh, uh, three or five times every 10,000 years. But if we have, uh, you know, 10 earthquake at this position, every time we have a two meter and 20 meter light lateral offset here, and it, there is a river running here, uh, scalp here, we have a clear landscape in this area. So this is what we call an uh, active fault. We have 2,000 active faults in Japan, and 100 of them are very large and very clearly recognized, and if we have a earthquake at this active fault, the, the size of the, uh, the earthquake will be uh, magnitude seven. So there are 100 active faults. So we uh, investigated those active faults, the history of the earthquake at the active fault, and to evaluate uh, how frequently the earthquake occur in that area. So we took 10 years to study, research those active faults to, to make a, a, a probabilistic seismic hazard map. Okay. And two of them, two of 100 major active faults is located to exactly the position what we uh, had uh, Kumamoto earthquake in 2016. So this means the earthquake was uh, recognized to to will happen in this area. So uh, seismologically speaking, this earthquake was forecasted. And uh, we have another estimate of um, uh, probability of magnitude about seven. It, it's uh, strictly speaking magnitude 6.8 plus or larger in 30 years. Uh, the central part of the Kyushu where the Kumamoto earthquake occur is about 20%. Uh, okay, this is a very high probability as compared to the traffic accident or a fire uh, injury, uh, a traffic accident injury or a fire. So, okay, this was estimated. This is, is a published before the 2016 Kumamoto earthquake was occurred. And again, in the uh, probabilistic seismic hazard assessment, the uh, Kumamoto area and the Mashiki town has a very high probability. So the point is, those information was published before the earthquake, okay? So this is not prediction. We cannot say when, exactly when the earthquake will occur, but uh, there is a big, strong motion in future. In, in, in lifetime, you are still uh, alive, and so it's very, High probability. Okay, Tohoku earthquake. Okay, sometimes it's confusing because the uh, the, the name of this earthquake is uh, uh, the Great East Japan earthquake. But this is not correct in even in Japanese or English because I want to distinguish from disaster and earthquake itself. Okay, the earthquake is a natural phenomenon, but the disaster is a social or economical phenomenon. So we should, conceptually, we should distinguish disaster and earthquake. 
And we have uh, different names for the disaster and earthquake. And the great, okay, great East Japan earthquake disaster is the name of disaster. But sometimes the disaster drops out. So it's very strange for me, but this, the, even the Japanese official document, the, the Great East Japan earthquake means earthquake disaster. And also the, the name of this earthquake is the, the 2011 off the Pacific coast of Tohoku earthquake. This is a very long name, so nobody wants to use this name. But this is the official name by JMA. So scientifically speaking, it, it, uh, off the Pacific coast uh, is the, uh, uh, Oki is the Japanese uh, word for the Pacific coast, uh, off the Pacific coast. So simply say Tohoku Oki earthquake or Tohoku earthquake is the correct name for the earthquake. But this is not the disaster. Okay, disaster happened on land. Okay, but the earthquake happened at sea. So different places. So we cannot prevent earthquake occur on the sea. However, if we can reduce the loss or damage at land so that we can reduce disaster. Okay, this is the point. We cannot control earthquake itself, but we can reduce loss or damage on land. So, so this, this means I want to re, uh, distinguish the disaster and earthquake, okay? From, from this earthquake, uh, more than 20,000 people were killed or lost. And 90% of uh, casualty is by tsunami. Tsunami. So many people were killed by tsunami. So this is what we are seriously concerned about if we have a very large earthquake at ocean, of course we have a, a large area affected by a very large strong ground motion. Many houses and buildings are collapsed by strong ground motion. But not all of all the people in the in the houses are, are killed by collapse of the house. Some are still survive, but after you know 30 minutes or one hours, a large storm coming here, and then the people cannot evacuate from the collapsed house, will be killed by tsunami. So this is a very serious situation. Okay, come here. We could forecast it such a large tsunami, a large earthquake before or not. This is a serious uh, problem for me because uh, I have a responsibility to forecast an earthquake. Okay. Honestly, an magnitude nine earthquake was not forecasted or predicted before the 2011 earthquake. So this is a limitation of seismology. We could not predict an earthquake. However, a large tsunami was estimated even along the Tsukushima coast, where the nuclear plant was located. We could not estimate magnitude 9 earthquake, but the magnitude, tsunami magnitude 8.2 event with 30% in 30 years along of Sanlik to Boso. It means the northern part of Tohoku area to the, uh, the southern part of Tohoku area. It's actually the Kanto area. And the large area was estimated to may generate a large earthquake which may generate a tsunami. Okay, again, we could not predict an earthquake of magnitude nine. However, we could estimate it or evaluated a very large tsunami earthquake in this area. Okay, however, this knowledge was not well communicated to the people, societies, even for the national or local government. 
and also the uh, electrical communication uh, company, TEPCO. They build the uh, Fukushima nuclear power plant. So this is the very, this is the point that I want to tell you. That's the okay. Science has a limitation to very quick, very accurately predicting or forecast something. But we have we have some knowledge about what will happen in future. So there is a not exactly predict, but uh, we can say something about uh, something very extraordinary thing will happen. So even in Fukushima case, we have some knowledge, but those knowledge are not well communicated. Okay, the reason why headquarters for earthquake research promotion was established is to tell the people anywhere in Japan we have large earthquake. Okay, at that time of 1995 Kobe earthquake, many people believed that the in in Kansai area, southwestern part of Japan, has never experienced a large earthquake or strong ground motion. That's that's a rumor, not scientifically correct idea, but. Uh, uh, the governor of the uh, the, the prefecture, uh, some uh, some, some uh, well-educated people believe that no earthquake will happen in southwestern part of Japan. But this is scientifically not correct. So to tell the people, to educate the people, anywhere in Japan we will be hit by a very large strong motion, and so. This is the idea why we established the government uh, organization and published this seismic hazard map. But in, again, 2011, almost the same situation happened. Okay, this is, this, this is a, a, some example of the, what, we have already, uh, what we have published before 2011. So this is the, uh, headquarters HERP's uh, publication in 2002, nine years before the Tohoku event, and uh, we say this area uh, magnitude, tsunami magnitude 8.2 will happen 30% in 30 years anywhere. Not necessary in this area. We have uh, 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 many uh, tsunami uh, earthquake here, um, uh, 1933, uh, 1986, uh, a tsunami earthquake hit this area, Sandic area. But there is no reason why no earthquake, no tsunami earthquake will happen in this area. So the Fukushima uh, nuclear power uh, plant is located here, and there is a possibility that uh, a large tsunami may hit this area. But this information, this knowledge, uh, not well understood by the people, and uh, that's, that's the real problem, I think, in Japan. So th this is the same anywhere in the world. Okay, okay, this cartoon is very interesting. Okay, this is not uh, animation, not simple animation. This is uh, made by data, made by GPS data. So, uh, GSI, uh, Geograph Japanese Geographical Information Authority, of the government organization, uh, 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 measure a very correct position of land at uh, 1,300 GPS station. And this has uh, the, uh, the accuracy, uh, the error is within five meters, okay? And it's very clearly uh, Tohoku area is uh, shortening, and uh, the contract, uh, contraction one two centimeter every year. So this is made by data, not imagination. But because this is a one year's uh, presentation and there's a cyclic animation, and sometimes uh, uh, the coastline moved quickly to east. But this, this is an artifact, not the real. However, what, what happened at 2011 Tohoku earthquake? 
we have huge movement toward east. 5.4 meter eastward movement during three minutes at the magnitude nine earthquake. This is a, simply because the, this earthquake was so huge and uh, GSI GPS network can detect it. And also we have uh, several ocean bottom uh, geodetic measurement stations. Uh, ocean bottom uh, geodetic measurement is the combination of GPS and acoustic uh, link. So this is not a real time uh, measurement. So uh, this movie was uh, made afterward to get the data from the ocean bottom instrument. Anyway, so we have a 5.4 meter eastward at the, the east coast of uh, Tohoku and 20 meter, 20 meter to zero meter eastward movement here and also there is a data 50 meter, five zero meter eastward movement. It's very, very large horizontal movement. So this means the uh, vertical movement is also very large and this earthquake generated a huge tsunami along the Tohoku coast. Not only coast, the everywhere in, in Japan and also maybe the tsunami is traveling uh, across the Pacific Ocean and to, to get to uh, North and Middle and South uh, American coast. Okay, again, this is the data. Okay, this is a kind of the, uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, the scientific uh, result, but uh, even we have this kind of data, we cannot predict an earthquake. The next earthquake occur where and when. But we need an estimate because to, to, prepare, to, pre, to, pre, to prepare the next large uh, earthquake, we need an uh, estimate. Okay, we have a government official estimate for the next large earthquake in Tokyo metropolitan area. We simply assume that the, the next earthquake will be magnitude 7.3 the same magnitude as in Kumamoto 2016 and the same magnitude of Kobe earthquake 1995. So magnitude seven earthquake occur every year somewhere in Japan. Unfortunately, if the magnitude seven earthquake hit the Tokyo area, because there are so many people live in Tokyo, greater Tokyo, and their exposure is extraordinarily large and the disaster risk is large. This is the, this is the earthquake, an earthquake which may cause a gigantic earthquake disaster in metropolitan area. This is the metropolitan area earthquake. The estimate of the, okay. We have many earthquakes which cause a damage in uh, Tokyo area, and the, the most uh, important is the 1923, a great Kanto earthquake. More than 100,000 people were killed by this earthquake. And uh, again, 90% of those are uh, by fire. So there are many wooden houses at that time and uh, once the very large earthquake occur and the uh, houses are collapsed and uh, there are many fires. And this is beyond the ability of the a firework, uh, so we have many uh, fire, but uh, this is a magnitude eight earthquake, okay? But magnitude seven earthquake happen very frequently. In world, we have five magnitude seven earthquake in 100 years. So this is uh, the, the, the data uh, wh which we have uh, previously and uh, we, have uh, say we can calculate the probability of the next uh, the next magnitude seven earthquake in in metropolitan area is uh, about seventy percent in thirty years. It's a very high probability. Once we assume 
the size and uh, the position, location of an earthquake, we can calculate its stronger motion here. And do we <coughs> say uh, the area with magnitude 6.6 .6 minus is 30% uh, of uh, this uh, uh, greater Tokyo area. So this is a large area of this metropolitan area. And if there are uh, old wooden houses, are uh, old wooden houses, not all, but most of them will be collapsed. And the estimate of fatality is uh, 23,000. And the economic losses is uh, about uh, 100 mil, uh, trillion Japanese yen. So this is huge. It, it is comparable to the annual budget of the Japanese uh, uh, the economy. OK. So 70% of the, uh, the, the total loss is uh, by fire. So those number is uh, important to reduce those numbers. So we reduce the, the houses are not well prepared. And uh, th this is the number we have. OK. It's time, maybe. OK, we should speed up. And a non cultural earthquake. If we have the same size of uh, as in Tohoku area, at that time, 20,000 people were killed by tsunami. But here, this is the, the gov government estimate of the next uh, large earthquake in Nankai Trough. It's uh, 300,000 people will be killed by tsunami. It's a huge number. OK, Th this is, OK, the, the size of the earthquake is, is almost the same. But the, the, the landscape of uh, Tohoku area and the southwestern part is different. No uh, high, no hills along the coast in the southwestern part. And also, th there are many populated cities in that area. So the exposure is large, and uh, the tsunami hazard is also large, and the damage will be very high. So this is a, the Japanese national challenge to reduce this number. OK, so this may be reduced to the same number as in Tohoku. But this is very much challenging. Once we have a magnitude 9 earthquake in, in southwestern part of Japan, we have a very huge tsunami. It's very hard to see. It's a 30 meter, 30 meter high tsunami may hit somewhere in, in Shikoka area. So this is an estimate. So, OK, this is simply we assume a very large earthquake in somewhere and to calculate the tsunami. And not necessarily it will happen. But people should prepare if there is some possibility to have very high tsunami, more than 10 meter or more than 20 meter. So some estimate is up to 30 meter. But it's impossible to make a seawall along the old coastline with you know, 20 meter high tsunami. We cannot see anything beyond the tsunami wall. So this is impossible to protect only by hardware like a tsunami wall. So we uh, suggested the people live in the area to, OK, you should go move up to the high area. But unfortunately, this area has, OK, this area has a very uh, wide area of lowland. So there are many what we call tsunami tower or tsunami evacuation place. There are every one kilometer. It's very uh, interesting uh, scenery, but it's not uh, stay a long time. So anyway, so uh, w we need to uh, suggest the people to move to the highland area. So th this information may help the people to move from uh, lowland to the highland. Okay. 
Oh, this is summary. Uh, I showed an example of 2011 Kumamoto earthquake. This is the magnitude seven earthquake. This is a not very large earthquake in Japan. Also maybe in Mexico, but once the magnitude seven earthquake hit the city or town, there may be uh, 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 a large uh, loss and damages. And another uh, lesson learned from this earthquake is uh, there are successive stronger motion. So you remember that once you have a very large uh, stronger motion in your house and some part of your house are damaged, then you should evacuate quickly. And, and the effect of the 2011 Tohoku earthquake, it's already seven years before, but uh, still the movement is uh, not the same before the earthquake. We have seriously thinking about the next very large earthquake in Nankai Trough area, southwestern part of Japan. This may bring a large uh, losses and damages, and we should prepare this earthquake. So it's very important to exchange knowledge and experiences among the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Mexico and Japan and to discuss the, what we have to do to uh, uh, to, um, to prevent the many people will be killed. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.